Well, the payrolls report coming in at 150,000 jobs added in October, that was below estimates. Economists were looking for 180,000 after September's blowout report. But the big question, would strike action in the United States distort the number? Well, the BLS said around 30,000 UAW workers were off the job at the time it conducted its survey last month. And that's a lot of paychecks that are not being accounted for. Now, the biggest monthly increases came in the government, education and healthcare sectors, the latter itself not immune to the impact of industrial action. Joining us to break it all down now, Yahoo Finance's Alexandra Canal and Anjali Kemlani. Big welcome to you both. So, so let's start with you, um, Ali, in terms of how we saw that impact from, from the strikes with obviously with the, um, the actors as well as the UAW strike as well. Yeah, both of those strikes registering a hit to the monthly jobs report in October. And I want to start with autos because that was the more significant of the two. According to that BLS data, employment and manufacturing increased by 35,000 in October, reflecting a decline of 33,000 jobs in motor vehicles and parts, quote, that was largely due to strike activity. This was the first time that the auto strike impact had been felt in any of the monthly jobs reports. And it's likely that we will see that continue the longer the strike's Go on. There have been positive signs that we could see an end to this strike after General Motors reached a tentative agreement with the UAW union earlier this week, joining Ford and Stellantis. The union's GM National Committee will vote Friday today on whether to send the tentative deal to its membership. And then if we go from Detroit to Hollywood, employment in motion picture and sound recording industries decreased by another 5,000 as Hollywood actors remain firmly on the picket lines following the conclusion of the actor strike last month. Now, employment in those industries fell by 7,000 in September and 17,000 in August. And since May, which is when the writer strike first began, employment in those industries has declined by 44,000. Now, the actors union SAG-AFTRA is continuing its negotiations with studios. It does seem possible that we could see an agreement uh, reached by this weekend, maybe even next week. Still TBD on that front. But all in, strikes have cost the U.S economy more than 75,000 jobs so far this year and with both of those strikes still ongoing it's likely that there's more pain to come indeed because i know we were wondering how this was going to start showing up in the jobs report perhaps if not this one as they were mentioning in terms of when it was calculated what we'll see show up perhaps in the next jobs report angela i want to turn to you because when we look at the the job gains that we saw in healthcare strong number here 58,000 new jobs but talk about the strike action versus what we also saw with the jobs growth yeah, of course, we know we were tracking that huge strike in Kaiser Permanente, uh, the 75,000, but that didn't make it into the, this reference period. In fact, it just got resolved on the day that this started, so they missed it. But there is still just one uh, notable strike. That's the RWJ Barnabas in New Jersey with 1,700 employees still on strike there. So that makes up a small portion of this report. As you noted, 58,000 uh really a large number, but not, not something that is particularly surprising, even with the pressures of the strikes, of the ongoing uh, demands of healthcare systems, the pressures they face from pricing, from inflation, and not being able to, like in other industries, raise prices accordingly, being at the, the sort of the behest of insurance and payers, they aren't able to make it all up and make it whole. So that's been the problem added to which you have 10,000 baby boomers being added daily to the population, the aging population, putting even more pressure and demand on the labor front. And of course, since the pandemic, we've seen the pressure that this has put on the labor force, the burnout that has been happening. And as a re re uh, result, the reduction of the labor force, broadly speaking, hospitals closing down. So it's a very mixed picture when it comes to what these additional pressures are. And yet, despite all that, you're seeing the gains in those jobs. So it really just is, uh, you know, a time period where these hospital systems, these health systems, these facilities really have to figure out how to hire up and continue that hiring trend. I've talked to some analysts who say that at least for the next decade, we're definitely going to see strong healthcare jobs grow as a result of all these pressures. Indeed, I know that that issue of the demogra demographic shifts not being reported on enough. So I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Appreciate both of you breaking that down for us, Anjali and Alice. Thanks so much.